the Blank Company, makers of that extra special Blankarine, Food of Supermen, presents... Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman, eighth wonder of the modern world. Visitor from a distant planet whose strength knows no limit and whose endurance is beyond anything humanity has ever known. Champion on earth of the weak and helpless, whose aim is to rescue the suffering and bring help to all who need and deserve it. And remember this, if you too would be a Superman... And now, Superman... Yesterday, we saw how the child of jor and Lara was placed in the rocket ship and sent on his way to Earth, while his parents died in the terrible explosion that wiped the planet of Krypton from the universe. Today, as our story continues, the child has become a man. The rocket landed in a desert. Superman stepped forth full-grown to explore this strange new world in which he found himself. Swifter than a bird in flight, Unaffected by cold, hunger, or fatigue, Superman set out to investigate the ways of man on his planet Earth. We find him at last hovering with his curious power above a quiet highway in Indiana. The road, with its trolley track at one side, winds to the top of a hill where the suburban cars stop to let off passengers, then down again to the valley below with a winding curve at the bottom. A trolley is just pulling up the hill. And as Superman wheels and turns in curious flight, unseen below, a man and a boy come out of the shed that serves as waiting room. Here she comes, Dad. (laughs) And right on time, too. I told you so, Jimmy. Gee, I hope it stops all right. Now, don't worry. It's slowing down. Does it always sway like that, Dad? Oh, sometimes, but it's all right. Don't seem to be many people on board. Yeah, it's the middle of the week. Light traffic. Morning, Professor. Going into town? Well, I hope so, John. Taking Jimmy to the fair. Hey, great show, all right. Well, I reckon you're my only passengers. Make yourself at home. I'm going to get me a drink. Why, Dad, we've got it all to ourselves. Yeah, regular private car. Where'd the motorman go? Oh, just over at the spring. Mighty hot day. You better hurry if he doesn't, he'll get left behind. <laughs> Can't start without the motorman. Well, we are. Huh? Look, Dad. What the... John, where are you? Daddy, what's happened? I want to get out. The brakes. Something's happened to the brakes. Let's get out quick. Open the doors. They're jammed. They're tight shut. We're going faster and faster. We're going downhill. What are we going to do? Jimmy, Jimmy, come here. The window, out the window, Dad. Get it open. Smash it. Wait. Jump, Dad, jump. No, no, it's too late. It's going too fast. We've got to. Look, there ahead, there's a tree. Jimmy! A tree, a tree's falling right on the track. Look, look, there in the sky. It's a man. He's flying. It can't be. It's not possible. He's coming straight at us. He's swooping down. Quick, grab hold of me. No, put me down. Let go. Stop. What are you picking me up for? Get away. Put me down. I'm saving your life. Daddy, he's picking me up out the window. Jimmy. Quick, one Jimmy. more second. Now then. Daddy! One under each arm. Out the window. And up in the air. Up. Up. And we're off. I don't know what to say. Quite all right, Professor. Pulling you and the boy out of that car was nothing. Uh, I can't believe it. Who are you, anyway? Where do you come from? I have no name. I come from a world that no longer exists. Here in this world of yours, men would call me a Superman. It's a dream. A wild, impossible dream. But, Daddy, it happened. We saw it. He flew down, took us under his arm. And out of the car, that's all. Nothing so strange about that. You you saved our lives, Jimmy's and mine. I don't understand even now, but I'm grateful. Are you, Professor? Do you doubt it? Would you do something to prove it? Would we? Anything at all. Then make me a promise. Promise that you'll say nothing at all about what's happened. What? Don't you want people to know? Not just yet. I want no one to know, except those I help. Will you promise? If you wish. I do. 
Believe me. Then you have our word. Is that all? No. You've given me your promise. Now I want your advice. You want advice from us? You know this world. I am a stranger. You know the people in it. And I have still to find them out. You want to meet men, is that it? Not meet them, Professor. Observe them. Study them. See them at their best and their worst. Know which to help and when help is needed. If you can tell me that... Daddy, can we help him? Well, I think so, Jimmy. If that's what he wants and all he wants... To me, it's a great deal. My friend, if we can call you that... I hope we can. My first friends on this earth. To mingle with people, to see men at the highest and lowest, if that's what you want, go to a newspaper, a great metropolitan daily. A newspaper? I'll do it. And join their staff. Be a reporter. But you can't do it in those clothes. Not that blue costume with the cloak and the shield on your breast. See, you just couldn't. Jimmy, these are the cloak and the shield of Superman. If I become as other men... Professor, I'll do it. I'll take your advice. And I thank you for it. Well, no thanks. If there were only something more... Than... There is. Remember your promise. And now, goodbye. I've stayed too long, and I'm off. Goodbye. Dad, look, he's flying again. City desk, white. That's in shape. You better get somebody on that top western story right away. Anything broke? It looks bad. I don't know where your dope came from, but it sure was right. Where are you now? At the yards, out of town. If I were you, I'd have somebody watch the man they call McCray. McCray? That's what I do, Chief. Watch him, trail him, follow him every minute. McCray's at the bottom of this, sure as you're born. Hey, I gotta beat it. Somebody's coming. So long. Excuse me, Mr. White. That young man's still waiting. What young? Oh, the one who wrote the letter, huh? Well, let him wait. Uh, who have we got that's free? Mm, the can's on the coast. Grayson's down in Virginia. Most of the day men are full up. Oh, I knew it. Confound it. Always the way. Something breaks and nobody to handle it. What is it, Mr. White? Railroad. Sabotage. I didn't believe it, but there may be something in it after all. If there is... Yes, sir? If there is, Miss Lane, it'll be the biggest story since Lindbergh. And me, shorthanded. Oh, what's the use? Yes, sir. Uh, about that man... Oh, send him in. Send him in. Yes, sir. Come in, Mr. Kent. Mr. White will see you now. Thank you. Uh, sit down. You want to see me? Yes, sir. My name is Kent. Clark Kent. What can I do for you, Mr. Kent? Well, Mr. White, you can give me work, I hope. Work? On the paper? Yes, sir. I'd like to be a reporter. Oh, you'd like to be a reporter? Floyd Gibbons in disguise? No, sir. Not Floyd Gibbons. Ever done any reporting? No, sir. No, sir. Uh, but you think you'd be a whiz, eh? I know. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Just the same. You haven't any openings? Not for greenhorns. I'm sorry if I'm blood. But, Mr. White, but even if I am a greenhorn, suppose I brought you a good story. And where would you get it? I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me, Mr. Kent. I... A really good story? Such as? Such as the complete inside on the man called McRae on the Southwestern Railroad. Yes. Uh, what's that? You heard me. Do you want that story? Do I want it? Well, I should say I do. But look here. I, uh... I think I could get it for you, Mr. White. What do you know about McRae? A little bit. Where'd you even hear his name? In connection with railroads, Mr. White. Stop beating up off the bush. I only heard the beginning of that myself yesterday morning. Not a paper in the country has carried a line. And yet and you... Yet co I come in here and talk about it. I think I could do something with that, Mr. White. Now, look here, Kent. Mysterious secret messages have threatened to tie up every railroad in the country. Beginning with the southwest... My goodness, Mr. White. For a while, the road paid no attention. And the crack flyer on the P&R went off a bridge. Yes, I read about that. Yeah, naturally. But you didn't read about the warnings, because they weren't printed. Weren't printed? No, and they won't be. Not until the FBI in Washington has checked all the angles, and then this man, McRae... Oh, yes. Yes, McRae. Well, where do you come in? How did you get to know McRae? Excuse me. City desk, White. My friend, tomorrow night, the flying you leaves Denver for the West. Will not arrive in Salt Lake City. Hey, wh what's that? What's the who's this? I have been called McRae. That is all. Hey, come back here. Wait, wait. Uh, who was that just called me? Trace him. Find out where he was. I'm sorry, sir. We cannot do that. The party is disconnected. Ah, uh, nuts. Uh, beg pardon, sir, but if that call did come from McRae, I should be inclined to believe it. Huh? 
How do you know who that was? I should warn the officials in charge of the flying ute. Now, look here. You couldn't hear that phone. What is this? As I was saying, Mr. White, suppose I brought you a good story. A really good story. The story of how the flying ute was wrecked on its way to Salt Lake. I take chances, Kent. I'm going to take a chance on you. Thank you, Mr. White. It's 2,000 miles. You'll have to hop a plane. I'll get there, Mr. White, in spite of the weather. Good Lord, I hadn't noticed. Well, get to the airport anyway. You rang, Mr. White? Uh, Miss Lane, this is Clark Kent, temporarily attached to our staff. You'll note I said temporarily. Yes, sir. Kent leaves for the west for the first plane. Get him tickets from the $200 advance. Well, Mr. White, all planes are grounded. That's all right, Mr. White. I'll get there. Take him outside and show him what he needs to know. Well, Mr. White, I'd like to thank oh, you. Oh, let it go, Kent. Let it go. Get a story and you get a job. You're either clairvoyant or the luckiest guesser alive. Either way, I can use you. But if you miss out, well... This way, Mr. Kent. Thank you, Miss Lane. It's good of you to show me around. Pretty lucky, I'll say. A hundred good newspaper men walking the streets. And you walk right into a job. I say, I am lucky. You wait in here. The ante room to the cashier's office. Well, I really don't need an advance. <laughs> Playboy in disguise, eh? I said wait here. Ah, what a beast of an evening. Don't fall out that window. It's 20 stories down. Beautiful view. Even in the fog. You wait right here till I get your money. Then I'll introduce you to a few real newspaper men. Plane's grounded. 2,000 miles to go. Nobody's looking. I'm afraid I can't wait. window 20 stories above the ground. In the wink of an eye, meek Clark Kent, cub reporter for the Daily Flash, becomes Superman, eagle of the sky, winging his way west over city and plain, river and mountain. But will he be in time? Can he checkmate the strange figure called McRae, discover the plot, save the flying youth, roaring toward Denver at 90 miles an hour? Tune in tomorrow and follow the story. And meanwhile... Remember, tomorrow, same time, same station. Look at the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! <laughs>